The 2000s were a golden age for movie tying games, where movie tying games weren't just a quick cash grab, but an integral part of the movie going experience. For many of us, these games weren't just merchandise, they were fully fledged experiences that allowed us to relive the magic of our favourite films. These games let us swing through New York City as Spider-Man, battle through the epic world of Middle Earth and relive the adventures of King Kong's Skull Island. But what really made these games special? And why don't we see them anymore? Today we'll explore some of the best movie tie-in games of that era, digging deep into what made them stand out. From Lord of the Rings The Two Towers to The Matrix Path of Neo. Today let's go back in and remember some of the best movie tie-in games that made growing up in the 2000s so special. In the 2000s we were flooded with movie tie-in games, nearly every big budget film had one and many of them were more than just an afterthought. Studios would spend millions to develop them alongside the movie, sometimes even collaborating with the filmmakers themselves to ensure the authenticity. So why don't we see them anymore? Well several things happened. One of the biggest reasons is the sheer scale of modern game development. Open world, high fidelity games now take years to create, much longer than the typical movie production cycle. Developers couldn't keep up with the tight deadlines tied to movie releases, and when they did, the games often felt rushed. On top of that, the rise of digital distribution and mobile gaming shifted the industry's focus. Big studios realised that standalone games like Spider-Man in 2018, or Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor could be more profitable and creatively flexible than being tied to a movie's plot. But back in the 2000s we got something special, a collection of games that balanced both gameplay and the spirit of the films they were based on. Let's dive into the best of the best. We will start our journey with Lord of the Rings The Two Towers, which was released in 2002. The Lord of the Rings The Two Towers was one of the first games to truly elevate the tie-in genre. This wasn't just a game, it was a visceral extension of Peter Jackson's epic film. Developed by Stormfront Studios and published by EA, the game was a hybrid covering both The Fellowship of the Ring and The Two Towers, making it a comprehensive adaptation of the first two films in Peter Jackson's trilogy. The team at Stormfront Studios worked closely with New Line Cinema to create a game that stayed true to the films, even using actual footage to seamlessly blend into gameplay. The developers were granted access to assets like concept art, voice actors and sound effects, which allowed the game to feel like a natural extension of the movies. This collaborative effort was rare at the time and is part of why The Two Towers stands out among tie-in games. At its core The Two Towers is a hack and slash action game, but it introduced depth beyond mindless button mashing. Aragorn's combat resolves around balanced gameplay, Legolas is fast and excels in ranged attacks with his bow, while Gimli is a powerhouse with his axe. The game's combat was more strategic than it first appeared. You had light and heavy attacks, combos, parries and a rating system that rewarded skilled play with experience points to unlock new abilities. This added a sense of progression that made you feel more powerful as you advanced through the game. The iconic Battle of Helm's Deep was a standout level, with the chaos and the scale of the fight translating well into the game. Critics and players alike praised the two towers for its faithfulness to the films, exciting combat and cinematic presentation. The seamless integration of movie footage and gameplay was groundbreaking for the time, making players feel as if they were part of the movie. Players praised the game for its faithful adaptation and fast-paced satisfying combat. The two towers showed that movie tying games could not only capture the essence of the film, but also deliver a thrilling experience on their own. We can't talk about movie tie-ins without mentioning Spider-Man 2 arguably the most iconic tie-in game of all time. Released in 2004, this was the first time we were given full freedom to swing through an open world New York City, and it was nothing short of revolutionary. Spider-Man 2 is not just a great tie-in game, it's often regarded as one of the best superhero games ever made. Developed by Treyarch, the game was groundbreaking for its revolutionary web-swinging mechanics and open world design. 
setting a standard that later games would follow. Treyarch's goal with Spider-Man 2 was to create a game that truly captured the feeling of being Spider-Man, and their primary focus was the web swinging system. Instead of previous games where webs could attach to the sky, Spider-Man 2 introduced physics-based swinging. This meant each swing had to attach to a building and momentum played a key role in movement. The developers wanted players to feel like they were truly navigating the city as Spidey, not just moving through a predetermined path. The web swinging mechanics were the star of the show, offering a level of freedom and control that had never been seen in a Spider-Man game before. Even today the web swinging mechanics are fondly remembered as some of the best ever implemented in a game. Players could swing, zip and catapult themselves across New York City, mastering the timing and momentum of each swing. This was paired with a full open world environment where players could engage in random crimes, side missions and of course the main storyline which followed the plot of the Spider-Man 2 film. Combat was fluid and fun allowing players to mix hand-to-hand -to -hand attacks with web-based abilities. The game introduced multiple enemy types, including the movie's main villain, Dr. Octopus, as well as classic Spider-Man foes like Rhino and Mysterio. Spider-Man 2 was a critical and commercial success, praised for its innovative web swinging, open world design and faithfulness recreation of New York City. It's often cited as one of the best superhero games of all time and was a major influence on later open world games, including Marvel's Spider-Man in 2018. The sense of freedom and immersion it delivered was unmatched at the time, and it set a new standard for what a tying game could be. In 2004, Pixar's The Incredibles hit theatres and shortly after, a video game adaptation arrived. Developed by Heavy Iron Studios, The Incredibles was a game that took the family dynamics of the movie and turned them into gameplay mechanics, offering a surprisingly diverse experience. Heavy Iron Studios had already worked on licensed games like SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom, so they had experience creating fun and faithful adaptations of animated properties. For The Incredibles, they sought to create a game that matched the high energy action of the movie while giving players the freedom to control each member of the Parr family. The gameplay was divided into different sections for each character, reflecting their unique abilities. Mr. Incredible's levels were all about brute strength, with a heavy emphasis on combat. His attacks felt weighty and satisfying, capturing his superhuman strength perfectly. Elastigirl's levels introduced more puzzle-solving mechanics, with players using her stretchy powers to traverse levels in creative ways. Dash's segments were speed-focused, requiring quick reflexes to navigate obstacles while Violet's stealth abilities added a layer of strategy, as she used invisibility to sneak past enemies. Though the combat and platforming could feel repetitive at times, the game did a fantastic job of translating each character's powers into gameplay. The game also added new enemies and levels beyond the movie, fleshing out the universe in a way that excited fans of the film. The Incredibles received mixed to positive reviews, with many praising the variety in gameplay and faithful adaptation of the character's abilities, while others criticised some repetitive sections. Despite its flaws, the game was a hit with fans of the movie, and remains a fondly remembered tie-in, especially for younger players who grew up with Pixar's superheroes. The Incredibles wasn't a perfect game. Some levels felt repetitive and the difficulty spikes were notorious, but it captured the fun and family dynamic of the movie in a way that still resonates with fans, and it wasn't afraid to deviate from the movie, introducing new enemies and scenarios that extended the superhero universe beyond the film. In 2005, The Matrix Path of Neo was released, offering fans the opportunity to step into the shoes of Neo himself. Unlike Enter the Matrix, which focused on secondary characters, Path of Neo followed the entire journey of Neo across all three films, from the original Matrix film all the way through to The Matrix Revolutions. Developed by Shiny Entertainment, the game had a tall order to recreate the mind-bending action sequences that made the Matrix trilogy iconic. The Wachowskis were heavily involved in the development of Path of Neo, offering creative input to ensure that the game felt authentic. 
However, they didn't want the game to be a simple retelling of the films. Instead, Path of Neo expanded on scenes and sequences, giving players more control over Neo's transformation, from hacker to savior of humanity. Shiny Entertainment built upon the bullet time mechanics introduced in Enter the Matrix to craft a more refined and player-driven experience. The game was a playground of bullet time mechanics, martial arts combat and over-the-top action. Players could slow down time, dodge bullets and perform acrobatic combat moves that mirrored the iconic scenes from the films. The Kung Fu fighting system was deep, allowing players to chain together fluid combos and interact with the environment during fights. Walls could be run on, objects could be thrown and enemies could be counter-attacked. One of the most memorable aspects of Path of Neo was the ability to deviate from the movie's plot. The game introduced alternative fight sequences and boss battles, giving players a more game-like experience than strict movie retelling. While not without its flaws, particularly its dated visuals and occasionally clunky controls, but for the fans of The Matrix, Path of Neo delivered on every level. Path of Neo was lauded for capturing the spirit of The Matrix films in a way no game had before. The ambitious action sequences and freedom to replay famous moments as Neo resonated with fans of the series, and the game has maintained a cult following despite its imperfections. Then we have Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, a game that gave fans something they had long been waiting for, a chance to freely explore Hogwarts. Released in 2002, this game combined open world exploration, spell casting and puzzle solving, creating an immersive experience that felt like you were truly living in the wizarding world. EA Games had a massive task in translating the wonder and mystery of Hogwarts into a video game. With this being the second game in the series, the developers built upon the foundation laid by Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, focusing on expanding the world and improving gameplay mechanics. They worked closely with Warner Brothers to ensure the game stayed faithful to the film, while also incorporating more elements from J.K. Rowling's books that were omitted from the movie. At its core, The Chamber of Secrets was an action-adventure game with puzzle-solving elements, but it was the open-ended exploration of Hogwarts that made it stand out. The castle felt alive, filled with secrets, hidden areas and mini-games. Players could attend classes to learn new spells like Expelliarmus and Scourge, which were necessary to solve puzzles and defeat enemies. The flying mechanics were also vastly improved, allowing Harry to freely roam on his broomstick across the school grounds. There was also a heavier emphasis on combat compared to the first game, as Harry faced magical creatures and bosses, including the iconic Basilisk fight. The game struck a balance between story progression and freedom to explore, which helped stand out in a sea of linear movie tie-ins. Chamber of Secrets was praised for its expansive recreation of Hogwarts, its variety of activities and its ability to immerse players in the world of Harry Potter. Though the graphics and combat were occasionally critiqued, the game's open world design and focus on exploration were all well ahead of its time. Fans loved it for the freedom it offered and for giving them the chance to fully immerse themselves into the wizarding world. For many, Chamber of Secrets remains the best of the Harry Potter tie-in games, thanks to its sprawling take on Hogwarts and the sense of wonder it delivered. Finally, we have Peter Jackson's King Kong, a game that did something truly unique. It blended two completely different game styles into one cohesive experience, based on the director's cinematic reimagining of the 1933 classic. Developed by Ubisoft Montepelle under the creative direction Michel Ancel, the game was a masterclass in atmospheric tension and cinematic storytelling. What set King Kong apart was its ambition. It wasn't just another movie tie-in, it was a hybrid experience that felt like both a survival horror game and an action brawler, offering something unique to players. Michel Ansel, known for his work on Rayman and Beyond Good and Evil, was tasked with creating a game that lived up to Peter Jackson's massive vision for the film. The collaboration between Ubisoft and Jackson's film team allowed for a seamless transition between movie and game with assets and designs from the movie being directly implemented into the game. 
One of the boldest design decisions was to remove the hood entirely, which added to the immersion by keeping players focused on the experience rather than game metrics. King Kong gave players two distinct gameplay experiences. As Jack Driscoll, the game was a tense first person shooter, with limited ammo and dangerous enemies lurking around every corner. You have to scavenge for weapons, use spears when you ran out of bullets and solve environmental puzzles to survive Skull Island's many dangers. The lack of HUD made every encounter feel more intense, as you had to rely on audio cues and subtle visual hints to manage resources. On the flip side, you could also control King Kong himself in epic third-person brawler segments. Playing as Kong felt powerful, especially when battling dinosaurs like the T-Rex. The game's set pieces were enormous in scale, allowing you to swing from trees, smash through enemies and feel the raw power of Kong. The contrast between the survival horror elements of Driscoll's gameplay and the empowering brawls as Kong gave the game a unique duality that was praised by players. King Kong was a commercial and critical success, with particular praise for its atmospheric design and its ability to immerse players in its world without traditional gaming elements like a HUD. While some found the game's linearity to be a downside, most players appreciated its tight pacing, cinematic presentation and diverse gameplay. The game won several awards, including Best Game Based on a Movie, and remains one of the most respected movie tie-ins of all time. So there you have it, six movie tie-in games from the 2000s that went above and beyond, delivering not only great adaptations of the films, but also incredible gaming experiences on their own. These games may have been tied to movies, but they carved out their own legacies in gaming history. From the action-packed battles of Lord of the Rings The Two Towers, to the innovative open-world web-swinging in Spider-Man 2, to the tense survival horror of King Kong, these games were more than just companions to their films. They were fully fledged experiences that expanded on their cinematic counterparts, giving players new stories, fresh gameplay and a deeper connection to their favourite movies. Unfortunately, as development costs skyrocketed and licensed games fell out of favour, we saw fewer and fewer tie-ins like these. Nowadays, it's rare to see a game so closely tied to a major movie's release. But back in the 2000s, these games were something special. They were events. And while the era of movie tie-ins may be over, their legacy continues to live on in the memories of players who grew up with them.